All right, and welcome back to a special episode of Seminole Sideline 365. As always, I am KB, and with me is the old man. Uh, why we're coming to you live for this special on-demand segment, uh, we hope you're watching wherever you are today, having a great weekend, uh, is that uh, the board of uh, uh, board of directors, or you'll clarify it for me, but Michael Alford was speaking uh, FSU and, Board of Trustees. Board of Trustees, that's it. The Board of Trustees, they had a big meeting, I believe, today. It was Friday, uh, with this being recorded yeah. on Friday, uh, February 24th. Uh, you're probably watching on Saturday, but there's a big meeting, Board of Direct, uh, Board of Trustees, uh, that was available on public media. You're probably working, so you probably didn't get to watch it. Uh, but you'll be probably hear this be uh, shared across social media. Uh, Michael offered, amongst other people, amongst, this wasn't just for sports. It was across all, all departments, I believe. Um, but Michael offered made a very strong case in front of the president, in front of multiple officials at, at the university uh, for making the case to leave the ACC and how they're falling behind in terms of revenue. And it's not because Florida State isn't a strong brand. It's not because they don't have strong programs. It's because of the horrible, horrible television and media deal that they are locked into for the next 13 years. Um, a deal that is putting them roughly $30 million behind per year uh, behind the SEC and Big Ten schools who are, aren't as some of these schools brands aren't even close to what Florida State's driving in terms of viewership and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, do you want to give us a, a quick – we're going to break down some of the video. There's about a 10-minute segment that's uh, Michael Alford really addressing this in terms of viewership and uh, viewership numbers as well as revenue numbers, and he, he cuts right to it. Um, but well, do you want to give a brief uh, overview? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the first thing I want to point out real quick is I didn't really have a clear understanding of what the Board of Trustees is or was. So I'm going to give you a quick readout on that. And I'm going to I'm going to read through some of this. It's just a second. So everybody understands the FSU Board of Trustees. And this is from the trustees. This is kind of their mission statement organization. The FSU Board of Trustees is the 13 member governing board for the university. The Florida State University Board of Trustees was created in 2001 and is the public body corporate of the university. It sets policy for the institution, serves as the institution's legal owner and governing board. The Board of Trustees is responsible for high quality education programs within the laws of the state of Florida and the regulations of the Florida Board of Governors. And lastly, the Board of Governors holds the institution's resources, that's a key, holds the institution's resources, meaning financial as well, in trust and is responsible for their efficient and effective use. Very important statement, which leads into what KB is going to play as this short segment from from AD Athletic Director Mike Alford's presentation to the board, which he has, it's a requirement for him to do. Yep. He and the president of Florida State, Richard McCullough, Richard D. McCullough, are responsible to this board. So the segment you're going to hear is a very telling sign of what KB and I will discuss briefly tonight. All right, let's uh, let's take a listen here. Uh, we'll stop it uh, as we see fit, but let, let's go ahead and uh, take a listen real quick. ACC average in the CFP area, and I mentioned the four million threshold. If you take Florida State and Clemson and put us together, we account for fifty-one percent of all four million plus viewership games in the ACC. And that's normalizing everything when you measure this. You measure your opponent, TV channel, time, team performance. When you do all that, we draw the best in the ACC. Now I want to talk a little bit about television. Now, let's put that in perspective real quick. So, and we'll get into these numbers uh, as they're going to get into. But he, he literally goes into... Uh, and he he had a chart there at, at one point where he shows like the TV ratings and, and how uh, and this is this is actually the the chart that he uh, he shows up on the board um, uh, of how staggering it is uh, to see just in front of your face how staggering those numbers are when you, when you look at them uh, at their face value like it, it's it's nuts that when you see two schools and I'll, I'll re rearrange this here so uh, people can see but Clemson. And Florida State are, are driving, like he said, 50% of the views to the ACC. 
Um, and it, it's staggering. And like you said, Florida State, for the most part, you know, has been on the, you know, aside from last year, was a three to five win school for three or four seasons there and was firing, you know, going through coaches and until last season when that was the breakthrough year. You know, and this is, like you said, taking from in the count 2014 to 2022. So this is coming out the national championship year, which you would see a spike. But from there on, it, we we're kind of middling there a little bit. You know, had the Orange Bowl win, stuff like that. But we haven't won the national championship. We went to the playoffs once after that national championship year. But all these other schools still are not bringing the value to the table that Florida State is. And then Clemson being that kind of the torchbearer since Florida State's a little bit of decline. These two schools are doing everything for this conference and the benefits of being in this conference are outweighing staying in it. Like we are not getting the rewards for driving this revenue because of the, the revenue sharing deal of it. Right. Uh, I, uh, that's what he's trying to point out is by clearly showing that Florida state drives averages 70% more viewers than the average ACC school. And that's can you, staggering. And can you imagine you've done a good job of bringing these up? First of all, uh, Mike Alford did a great job, him and his staff, putting this briefing together and, and with the, a lot of us are visual learners too. And, and he put up some great uh, uh, PowerPoints or whatever the hell you want to call them. But also he also points out, I don't know if it'll be in the segment we play and that's okay. He says it's about football and then it's about basketball. Yeah. Can you imagine if we were a top 10 and this is what I've been preaching week after week and you have two KB week after week. We have to have excellence in basketball, too. It's important yeah. to TV revenues. Not as important as football, but it is important to the networks when they're putting these on. So if we had a top 10 basketball team, can you imagine what the numbers would be? So because look at Duke. They're always good in basketball or were good in basketball. And UNC, look where they are. Even with that, they're not even pulling close to the numbers we're pulling. So given that... This starts to lay the ground to what our discussion will be after you play the rest of Alford. Absolutely. So I'm going to jump back over to uh, to this, and uh, we'll get into the, the television contract conversation here. So uh, let me uh, put this down here. I'll actually put this back over here. And this is very worth listening to by all the viewers. Yep. Contracts across the country. When, when the media contracts come in, ABC, Fox, et cetera, and negotiate with our conference, they're looking for a couple of factors, what goes into it. They look for TV viewership numbers, which I just pointed out. They look for TV households in your marketplace, which we happen to live in a, a great marketplace in the state of Florida. And they measure your football basketball performance. When you look at that as a TV, uh, ESPN, or anyone coming in once again, the kind of the rule of thumb is 80-20. 80% of that media is going to be geared towards football, 20% towards basketball. That's just kind of when they go in with their variables. Stop the it there. Stop it there. Numbers they're playing. Quick comment. 20% is basketball. This is why, and, and Mike Alford is an aggressive athletic director who wants excellence on his watch. Coach Hamilton will be gone after this year. That's my prediction. I don't know how you feel about it, KB. 20% of the brand is based on basketball. So I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, I think there, we have gone back and forth about how important actually is basketball to the athletic department, how much they care. But I think Michael Offer, like you said, in this board of, you know, board of trustees meeting said it, it's very important to the longevity of this program. It's 80, 20, but these are the top two programs that have to be healthy uh, to, to continue to be a brand. Uh, and it has to get to the next level. And I don't think uh, a team winning eight games uh, and showing a couple of seasons, you know, continual decline year after year is going to cut it. So I, I would agree with you that we would most likely see a change. And I think this was a statement today saying, clearly pointing out basketball as part of this growth, that they need to get, they are part of this brand. And if you are winning eight games, then you are not reflecting correctly on the brand that we're trying to build here and continue to up, upkeep. So, Playing with. Us in the ACC, as you see on this slide, we're locked in to the 2036 season. Each autonomous five conference gets to go to the open market before 
uh, our deal is even up. Some okay, of them stop it, times. Tim. The Big Ten. Okay, again, this is Athletic Director Mike Alford talking. He points out something very important, KB. He's talking about expiration of current contracts, and he's looking at these here. He's seeing who's going to get to do negotiations quicker than the ACC or Florida State being involved in the ACC. And everybody is. And he knows that that disparity, they're going to go out and get billion-dollar contracts. Okay. Well, and, that's a, and, well, and that disparity is going to be huge when when the ACC doesn't expire for, what, 14 years? Is my math right? Yeah, no, 13 years. Yeah, 13 you're, years. Locked, you're locked into a bad deal already, and you're behind. And these deals, these other schools that are already in $30 million ahead of you are yes. going to be able to renegotiate before you and expand that and expand their lead ahead of you. So you're going and to you go won't into, catch up No, because it, it, you'll go into your negotiations and already be behind. They're not going to give you a hundred million dollar raise when you have, you know, it, it's kind of like going to negotiations. If you don't have, if you don't have that kind of uh, leverage. C- leverage or say, okay, we're at this level already. Let's get to this. Level. Just like in, you know, salary negotiations, you have to show, okay, I'm at this level. I'm going to go to this level and show that, you know, people aren't just going to throw you an extra hundred million dollars a year, but that's what these other conferences are smart in doing is that they put like seven year, six year negotiation cycles in because they know that they're going to continue to get leverage, be able to leverage their teams, their viewership, stuff like that, their ad revenue. And they're going to want to renegotiate these values. And, and this is, and this is where you start to see why teams are jumping conferences now. They're starting to jump out of areas that from a business standpoint, from a business standpoint, makes more sense to their program for years down the line. That's what's at stake here. And in his presentation, this is what Alford is pointing out. Because ultimately, this board of trustees will have a say in what the university does or does not do. And he is laying the ground. This is important. He is laying the ground through this presentation of what Florida State is going to have to do. Correct. All right, let's continue this. This is all for talking now. Went in in 2023 with their new deal, and and it goes to the 2030 season. So they'll be signing a new contract and go to market once again ahead of us twice in 2029. He's talking, he's talking about the Big Ten right now. Yeah. Yeah. The SEC with the two with Texas and Oklahoma coming in received a new deal that kicks in next year. And that lasts to the 2034 season. So they'll be signing a new contract going to market once again before our deal comes up for even a more profitable deal in 2033. Big 12 just signed a new agreement that start kicks in in 2025 to 2031. So they'll be signing a new agreement sometimes in 2030. And if you read all the the articles right now and the rumors going on, there's they're looking at possibly going into the PAC 12, PAC 10 now, and looking at members of what's going to go on with that conference. Okay, but the PAC 12 must sign a new TV. I like this column over here as he's talking. Look at the average AAV team. Yeah. Look at that number just between the first two, ACC and SEC. 51 to 17. Yeah. That's. It's, uh, it's, it's massive. It's, it's. This this chart couldn't be any more explosive to the people sitting in that room who are all very experienced business people. Okay. And then, and what you're talking about too, you talked about why are teams leaving and why can't the ACC attract bigger brand teams to strengthen the value of the conference is because of the numbers right in front of you. You look at the PAC 12 and and the ACC. Yeah, exactly. They are not able to give their teams more money and they are not able to, they're, they're kind of crumbling because of the money issue and the SEC and the big, big 10 have done phenomenal jobs of leveraging their brands and leveraging their media rights to get huge payouts for their teams. And like we talked about, the $30 million difference between Florida State and some of these schools. And why why would Texas and Oklahoma and you know the UCLA's and USC's, who you could argue are not at the level potentially uh, of Florida State's brand or you know, performance or whatever you want to say. But some of these schools, like the UCLA's who's who has an academic brand, but sports recently hasn't been uh 
you know, a, a powerhouse. When's the last time they won the national championship? Like, but things like that. But they are able to make the move because, and they want to make the move to these conferences because of the money. They're, no one's going to come to the ACC. The only team an ACC team could probably attract is from someone from the AAC or maybe someone from the Big Ten, exactly. uh, Big Twelve, exactly. because that's falling apart. Or you know, that's that's the only way it's going to happen. And the other, the other thing part here is, too, is that with the Big 12, look at their deal. Their deal starting 2025, and their expiration is in thirty uh, in uh, 2031. They're able to still renegotiate yeah. before the ACC's deal is done. Yeah, so they can, they, they can sign a, a, a horrible deal, have fewer brand, uh, brands. They, their conference is, is on the verge somewhat, people are saying, of falling apart in terms of the brands they're losing to the SEC. But they can still get more money, renegotiate, attract better teams back to it, it's still being a better position than the ACC. It, it's crazy. So I'm going to put Michael Alford back on. You be deal shortly. We're hearing everything media chatter indicates it's going to be a shorter contract and should be done in the next two weeks. And if not, then you read about the Big 12 possibly going in and getting some teams, mm. which would really leave the Pac-12 mm -hmm. uh, vulnerable for mm -hmm. some other teams mm -hmm. to be sitting in the open market, um, ready to be taken away. So I'll say this just because I wanted to point out that we contribute around 15%. If you take the ACC agreement. I, I, I want to stop it right there. He said it, it leaves the Pac-12 in a place to be vulnerable of leaving teams. I think this was a subtle shot at the ACC because he doesn't want to go up there and I, I think to take direct shots at the comments they're in because right. that, you know, that could stir up some things, make right. headlines, stuff like that. But right. I think him saying that a conference close – to the Pac-12, uh, like, uh, like, like the ACC, yeah, like the Big Ten and the uh, SEC, saying that they are locking in these deals that's going to attract their teams to want to move over, is going to leave the Pac-12 in a bad place. Is exactly what's happening on the other coast with the uh, ACC. Better deals, media deals to a lot. Uh, Geographically aligned conferences is going to drive teams away from this conference, whether it be Clemson, whether it be Miami, teams that don't drive the viewership outside of Clemson. These other teams, UNC, UNC brands like that, will make the move if Florida State doesn't get ahead of it. And, and spots Alford, will be taken. Right. And you're exactly right, KB. And Michael Alford knows that these other – you think Miami's just sitting around doing nothing? You think Clemson's sitting around waiting? I know Clemson's for the, I, I, for, I, for the The ACC has a boat with, with holes in it. It's taking on water. We're lucky to have Mike Alford, okay? We're lucky to have Mike Alford who's trying to get ahead of this, and he's trying to be subtle about it, and he's trying to be very professional. But as it goes on, as he talks here, he, he's, he's laying the groundwork – for a departure. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at what ESPN, what ABC, what all the media outlets measure, we represent 15% of the ACC's media agreement, Florida State. But we only receive 7% of the distribution. 7%. Us and Clemson <laughs> account for 24% of the overall media agreement with the ACC. And if you look at the numbers there, the Big Ten is projected to distribute about 80 million on average to their members, and the SEC about 72 million on average to their members. Right now, when you throw everything in, we receive about 42 million. Let's so that would put it. us literally. <laughs> That's 50% of what they're getting. There is no way, and this is said, and I'm going to bring it up now. I'm quoting from an article from the Tampa Bay Times, well written well written by, uh, uh, let's see, a guy, I can't, where's his name? Matt Baker. Matt Baker says it is not sustainable, quoting almost, mis well, I'm not sure he's quoting, but he said it's not sustainable to have a national championship program of excellence at Florida State, given those numbers. No, not making 50% less and having a brand that's driving 50% of the conference's Basically, you're doing 50% of the work and only receiving 7% of the distribution. And this is a critical point that you can't keep falling behind because you'll never make it up. No, you can't no. keep losing ground and expect to make it up. You're not going to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Early 30 million behind our competitors and peers across the country. And that's 30 million every year as these contracts till 2036. And remember, some of them go to market again 
So that number is even going to get larger. So I'll say all this just because we're in deep discussions and with Chairman Collins and you got to say deep shit. Carolyn, I, that, that's literally, I, literally, I thought he was going to say we were deep. <laughs> but he's a professional. But he, this keeps him up at night, but it keeps him motivated to get something done. Yeah. We're in the weeds on everything that will impact the future of FSU revenues. Everything from the CAGR on things like sponsorships and ticketing to the potential of, I just pointed out, our media rights impact. Um, and even looking into windows, uh, these agreements come up, what windows would be opening up if, if some of these realignment dominoes fall? If the Big 12 was to get some teams from the pack, that's going to open up some windows. If the Big 10 goes and gets some other teams from the pack that are left out, that's going to even open up other media windows where we can't go in, and have that brand showing anymore. Any questions on the media? Yeah, leave this. Leave this. Any questions? Anybody want anybody want to take their first shot at that? <laughs> Other than saying we have to do something. <laughs> and we're working every day. Uh, yeah, the president and I are talking. That's it's the president. Now listen, president, listen, listen, listen. Mike Alford is a good businessman. You can see what an athletic director does now, besides going out and going to a ball game now and then. This guy's a businessman. He's out there to bring excellence, win, win games in all sports, have the best coaches, but he also needs money to do that, okay? Yeah. So the question that comes up, <laughs> did you hear the question? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll play it. Bring it one more time and then stop. I don't think, there was no question. No one asked it. Yeah, question. yeah, there was. The, the Jim Moran Foundation asked. Talking daily uh, about our future, and, and we work this on it. Let me see if he uh, has any here. questions on the media. Yeah. Any questions? Anybody want anybody want to take their first shot at that? <laughs> Other than saying we have to do something. Okay, stop we're it. working every day. Uh, yeah, there's the question. First, it goes any questions from the media? No one from the media ask a question. Not one person. I I, I don't so, think it's I don't think it's really well. Uh, no, this media there. This, I don't. Well, I don't know. This, yeah, this I, I, I'm not going to call out that there were FSU guys like us there. Okay, probably not. I I don't know. But there was no question. So this guy, who's one of the board of trustees, obviously asked the question. So, is there anything that can be done about it? Play the response. Uh, the president and I are talking daily uh, about our future. And and we worked with the chairman. I mean, we have our revenues probably known and probably different options better than any other athletic department in the country. We go out to 2042 on projected revenues and hire the consultants come in and really work with us on it and, and evaluating and every option that we have going forward. But we have to do something but, because we are a brand and we're at a very important brand, and we drive the media value in this conference. Okay, pause And we'll it. Con consider okay. he, he He is clearly, again, through this entire presentation, laying the ground to these board of trustees who he's responsible for, just like the president, that we're going to have to make a move. Yeah. We're going to have to make an aggressive move, and it's going to come up here in a minute about how is it even possible to make a move. That's number one. Legally, you're contracted due to TV rights, grant of rights and all this. He doesn't get into it specifically, but he does say a couple of things that leads me to believe they're working every day to get out of this ACC, which is a ship going down. So play, play it. Consistently talking to the conference. I know the president and I sit in meetings <laughs> where we're making sure that they understand of our value to this conference. But at the end of the day, if something's not done, we cannot be 30 million behind Pause it. every year compared to our peers. Okay. He's using this at leverage in the ACC conference meetings to say, you're going to have to give us a lot more money. Okay. But here's quickly, the problem. He's saying, quickly. yeah, no, he's saying we're going to need the money and it's going to be big time money and, it, and it's going to be done quickly. And, but you know what, you know what? I don't think they have enough money to do that, 
and I think the rest of the ACC has to vote on that. I think that, that he's just trying to be fair about it, to say we want to give them a chance. But his thinking is we've got to get out. Yeah. It's not stay well, in the ACC. There's no future in the I, ACC. I, I think it's more, it's it's too, like it's a pub, public You've got to control the public look of it too. You can't of just course. Say, you can't of say course. we're gonna of because it, it, looking at the buyout, if they Florida State really wanted out, they don't have to pay upwards of 120 million dollars yes. to get out of the yes. ACC. Yes. That's a but, lot of money for a public university to pay however, to get out of an athletic conference. However, as I think you play his answer, I think he gets into that. And I and to forecast it a little bit, somebody projects out, well. If we're if we're making even more money at another conference, we can pay that off. It's like paying off a mortgage. Well, we if they're making three, we can pay it making, off for like four years. Yeah, if they're making 50, 60 million dollars. And so you're TV. looking at the long run, not the short one. Yeah. Go ahead and play it. I think um, one of the slides that you showed us last time, if you took the conference revenue away and put us in the SEC, our athletic department revenue ranks third. Third. Third in if, the SEC and third in the Big Ten. And third in the Big Ten. That's how well we do aside from the conference payouts. But if you take that and then every year you're losing 30 million or you're 30 million behind to your competitors, you got to do, now you've got to be better than everybody in the country by a long shot to mm -hmm. overcome that. And yes. that's just okay. pause I mean, it. There is no doubt in my mind that Mike Alford has talked with this guy. I don't know who this guy is. That's the but president, he, isn't it? No, I don't. I, I don't know who it is. He's a board of trustees. I I can't tell who it is. There's there's no doubt. That's I don't know how you feel. Sorry, there's, the there's, there's no doubt in my mind that this guy. Maybe it is the president. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. He's a board of trustees. The yeah. president's not making the president. There's no doubt in my mind. He kind of set this up. Okay. Not. Well, he kind of. He kind of. You know. Listen. The, and it's like in Congress, you go we'll around tough. and you find out who your friends are on this and have them ask a question which highlights your program. And, well, and that's what's happening here. And it's not collusion or anything. It's just smart on Alford's part. No, but it's so that there's a problem here. No, but then to your point, like if he is not, he's not going to be able to accomplish what he wants to accomplish if he works in a silo. So he that's is right. going to have to put the seat. He's going to have had to have put the seat. That's right. And he went around and briefed for a kind long time. Pre -brief. Yeah, pre -brief. Not, not just before this meeting, for years. Before. Oh, for sure. For sure. Go ahead. It's almost impossible. It's, it's impossible. Impossible. Um, so we're working with the conference right now. We're talking to them about how we rev create a revenue distribution model that takes in factors of who you are, how you produce, how you play, what your brand is. Um, working with other athletic and your basketball on that. season know sucks. You know who's yeah. not going to vote for that? Wake Forest, uh, Syracuse. Duke. Schools like that are not going <laughs> to vote for that Pittsburgh. because they get screwed. Right. So I sit in some meetings on it. So uh, we're working with the conference. Don't know if we're going to get there. Um, don't there know. You go. Go. Nope. You there will not you get go. it. But no. this, this is him saying we tried. We, See, tried. we tried. We tried. Negotiations didn't model. work out. Will make that up. I know it won't make that up, but what can it make up? So there's they're working on options, but at the end of the day, for Florida State to compete nationally, something Listen. has to change. There you go. There yeah. you go. Right there. That's that's the mic that's drop the that's, that's the stuff. cannon shot. Bam. That's the cannon shot that this guy and the president of Florida State and this board of governors, they're gonna come together and go, we gotta get the hell out of here. Yeah. We gotta get off this ship. And we're going to, because you know what? Miami may be get, trying to get out. Clemson, you think they're going to stick around for this? Hell yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Clemson's not, they're not going to sit around and, and take a whole bunch of less money, even well, though they're the, the leader in the ACC. They don't care about it. Clemson knows they have a, they have a window of time. Like they've yes. been in, a, they, they've been an emerging brand, not as long as Florida State. Like they came right. on the scene relatively right. recently, right? Right. right. And, and they're now in the top two of Florida State by a large margin. Like Miami's broken as a brand right now. But, but there's Clemson still knows, a brand. Correct. Miami but Clemson knows, Clemson knows that if things could always go bad, like their brand could, they could fall out of the, the spotlight over the course of 15, 20 years. Sure. Because things go. Sure. Because they're not built like Florida State. They haven't had the track record that Florida State has had since Bobby. Like, but they're building something like that. So I think they know 
they're going to look for avenues even faster than Florida State is because they know they need to capitalize on what they have right now, the momentum they have right now. Let so me I, let, let me quote quickly from the Matt Baker Tampa Times, who did an excellent job summarizing this. The numbers all for presented are striking. The SEC will soon make eight hundred eleven million per year with its new ESPN ABC deal. The Big Ten's contracts are closer to one point one billion dollars. Yeah. The ACC lacks far behind at two hundred and forty million. Yeah. It's yeah. striking. This yeah. is not even close. And I think the difference is now is that all the numbers are he is he has numbers he can show the board. He has numbers he can show the board. He's got it's, the numbers. All, like, all the ratings numbers are in. All yeah. those revenue numbers are in. They're right. all booked. They know the negotiation cycles. It's all clear as day what needs to be done, and they can show that all to the ACC and say, "Hey, this is what this is what it is." You can't really argue that we're behind and we're getting screwed in this deal. What are you going to do to fix it? And here's our suggestions: yeah. if you implement them, we're gone moving forward. Okay. Michael, is, is the of any kind of buyout even feasible? Of uh, the conference? Right. Counselor? Sir. I'm going to- so this, this is where he's smart because he knows he, he – and that's why I think some of these questions weren't asked because legally he can't overextend and say things that could – Get them in trouble. Well, he has a he has a board of legal, trustees counselor there in the legal counsel during yes, this legal process. staff. Yeah, <laughs> that is an excellent question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bylaws have language in there uh, governing exit from the conference um, and what the cost is of exiting the conference. And it is uh, written in there that it is three times the operational budget of. The annual operating budget of the ACC. <laughs> Listen to that. Laws of the ACC. Listen to that. Today, that's about 120 million. Yeah. Today, if using today's numbers, it'd be roughly 120 million. Three times the operational budget of the ACC. That that's uh, that's a large number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, I think this well, let's, question. Let's, yeah, let's like go yeah she was well prepared yeah, for this question. Oh, well, yeah, she's probably she probably she's found well, that in the first ten minutes they put her on the yeah, job of no, what no, the buyout exactly. should be no, exactly. paid out, um, which is withholding of distributions, and then due um, at, at the exit time, the balance is due, is what the bylaws say. Just hypothetically, if we made another thirty million dollars in a year, it would be four years would be breaking even to pay that pay that yeah. out then roughly. Hypothetically. 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 Yeah. So basically your your return on investment of moving would be four years. Yeah, that, yeah. If, 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 if you're if you're a businessman, if all these people are business oriented, you know that you're in business, you know it's about the money, it's about the yes. numbers, and what they're saying is we're gonna take a hit up front, okay? Because you have to pay that, that that bill is due as soon as you say you're exiting. You are gonna get a bill okay. for 120 okay. million dollars, okay. you have to pay that. But you we're going to mortgage it. We're going to yes, mortgage yeah. that. And in four years, in four years, we will have broken even on that. And now we're fully accelerating into big, big money. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's a big, that's a big bill to have to pay up front. And it, yeah. it, it, yeah. This is also, this isn't just about student athletes. This is about students in general. Money from these sports programs also flow in yeah. to the universities to yeah. pay teachers and professors and buy equipment and all other stuff. So this is about bags of money. Yeah, I, I think this is, I don't think if, uh, well, we'll let this play out, but I'm not sure there's much else after this. Yeah, no, I think this is about it. All right, keep going. Okay. Then I also thought it would be important to share with you the industry update. This is something that Councillor Egan and I are constantly working on, reviewing, watching the trends, where it's going. So I'm going to go kind of fast I don't through this. Need yeah, I, I think yeah, we, we saw, we're, we're, we, saw we got the meat. Also. Yeah, we got the meat uh, that we wanted for our viewers out there. We One thing I to- want to show, lastly, is um, you're talking about money, and, and it comes down to this. But it shows the position that Alfred and the team have put in. And this came up, I think, a, a couple of weeks ago in terms of the, the profit that the, you know, the profit that FSU Flex is coming in front of. And you can see what they budgeted, what, what their actual income has come in as. And I, this stuff, I don't believe 
Um, I thought they said that this was not even including last season, even though it says football tickets for 2022. Um, oh, this is tickets. This is tickets. But even football revenue, uh, I think, was higher than this for this actually last past season. Uh, but as you can see here, they've done, they've exceeded their expectations of what they budgeted for. Um, their actuals are coming higher for the bowl game, obviously, the, the Champions Cup, the suite, stuff like that. So they're operating at a very, very high clip right now in terms of operations and donations and, 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 from all all parts, so you've got the collectives working well. Now you've got the internal boosters. You've got ticket sales. You got everything rolling, and I think he sees this as this is the final biggest piece of the puzzle we have to make work. We got to plug in is this media rights deal because if we have this, then we don't have to worry about being one of those programs that's in the negative year after year. This can set us up in our future for a long time, and, and I think he's got everything else on track right now. It's that lot that, that he's framing it up as this is the final piece of the puzzle right here. It's this media rights deal. So I don't think, yeah, I, I and, and we can start to wrap this up now yeah. because there's going to be a lot more coming on this in yeah. months down the road and so on is I think this is the cannon shot that says that this athletic director and this university president is all sold on and they did a great presentation to the board of trustees of of finding a way out i don't know if there's a legal loophole besides a buyout i don't know if there's two pieces there a buyout is one thing that's all pure money the other one is can we buy out can we exercise that as an yeah, option yes, we'll yes. look into that that was but, the, that's the 120 yeah. million dollars so yes. this presentation for this year and i these, these boards don't meet that often they have like a uh, three days here in february i don't know how often they meet but this is the presentation to say we you know we'll, we'll we're trying to work it out with the acc but even at maximum capacity they're not going to get what they want. They should shoot high. They're not going to get what they want. Use that as a springboard to say, we're done. Here's your check. We're out. And, and then is- go after. And I say it's going to be one of the three, SEC, Big Ten, or Big 12. It's not, not Big 12. It's, it's not. It's Big Ten or, or, or uh, SEC. And this is, this is a slide for the conference that says this brand will drive views. You take us, you're going to get – the top performer in the ACC and it's going to drive views your conference. So you don't even have to hesitate. No, we haven't been to the playoffs. We haven't won the national championship since 2013, but this brand still drives views. And imagine we start winning 10 wins every single season. You know, and, and get a new basketball coach yeah. who gets excitement going. That's so, it. That's, that's it. it. Yep. All right. So thank you guys. Like, subscribe, share the video. Let us know what you thought. You think, yeah. uh, what Leave you guys comment. think of Alford's uh, comments yeah. uh, to yeah. the board of trustees and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.